welcome to this video lecture of 19 scphy u301 uh, we have been discussing the third chapter and let's quickly revise the topics that we have discussed so far so first we defined this del operator which is a vector differential operator and it is defined like this it is partial differentiation with respect to x into unit vector i partial differentiation with respect to y into unit vector z and partial differentiation with respect to z into unit vector k and this is a vector operator now and it's an operator so the operator the del itself has no value at any given point when you operate it onto a scalar or a vector field then it has you can associate value for that particular operation then we defined laplacian operator it is del square operator so this is second order differential operator and it's a scalar operator now which is obtained by taking dot product of del operator with itself which is equal to double differentiation with respect to x plus double differentiation with respect to y plus double differentiation with respect to z and you can see that it is now a double differential operator and then we define this gradient of the scalar field which is basically operation of del operator onto any scalar field now we consider three important things here what is the first one let me call this as significance of scalar field so when you calculate del phi what do you get physically what is the significance of that yes so del phi is basically this quantity it is d phi by dl maximum so if you start with a point in the scalar field and if you move in different directions now this rate rate per unit length of change of that scalar from the given point is different for all these directions d, d, del phi or gradient of the scalar field is maximum rate and it is in the direction along which that happens okay so this gradient of the scalar field gives you the maximum rate of change of scalar field with space per unit length and its direction is also in the same direction along which the the scalar changes with maximum rate then second concept that we studied was this directional derivatives now what is directional derivatives or let's first see okay you it uh, it is better if you perhaps answer it uh, the mathematically how you calculate it so uh, directional derivatives how do you calculate them yes it is calculated like del of phi dot product with this is a vector quantity which is gradient of the scalar and dot product with a unit vector u so when you calculate this what is meaning now what is physical meaning of that it means that if u is this direction suppose u is in this direction then this quantity or directional deriv derivative gives you d phi by dl rate with which scalar field changes per unit length along that particular direction where the the unit vector u is pointing right so this is the second thing that we studied when we considered the gradient of scalar field so these are two important things and what was the third thing that we studied right this del phi is always normal to equipotential surface at the given point remember we calculate this del phi at the given point and these are this is very important in fact these three operations are the reason that why we are having this particular chapter gradient of scalar field and in this chapter we now what we have to discuss next is uh, divergence of vector field and in next lecture or uh, after that after we are done with discussion of divergence of vector field we will study curl of the vector field so these three things divergence so let me write it here gradient divergence of a vector field and curl of the vector field these are the reasons why we are having this chapter so it is very important that you understand them this is the most important point or these are the most important topics of this lecture so if it is clear now we can move on to the next part which is second important thing which is the divergence of vector field so what we want to discuss in this lecture is this we will briefly revisit uh, concept of riemann integrals which is basically 
the integration that you perform then we will discuss the concept of flux through open surface and through a closed surface then we will see the concept of divergence of a vector field its physical significance and finally we will discuss gauss's divergence theorem mm, let's first revisit riemann integral suppose i have this function okay so what you see there in that green curve is some function which is plotted as a function of x and what you want to calculate is this integration integration from say point a to point b of this function f of x dx so this is point a and this is point b when you calculate this integration which is referred to as riemann integral what does that mean how do you calculate this integration apart from formulas and uh, calculating the derivative integrals what is meaning what do you, what do you get when you, you calculate that integration it gives you area under the curve and how does it do it it is it does it in this particular way what it is what is done is or what we consider is that this interval from a to b is divided into equal sub intervals each with say width dx and therefore number of intervals that we have sub intervals that we have is b minus a divided by dx and then you consider the limit that delta x is tending to 0 and n is tending to naturally therefore n is tending to infinity then you calculate this sum what sum you calculate you first consider this point and then consider what is value of the function at that point let me call at call that as f of x0 so at this point you consider so when you calculate this integration a to b f of x dx is you you find out what is the value of the function at x0 at the first sub interval then you multiply it by dx which is width of the interval which we are saying that is tending to 0 it is in this limit then you consider the next interval find out what is value of that function at that point so you consider the value of the function at x1 let me call it multiply it by dx and in this fashion you are go on considering sum of all the all the values of the function at all these n number of intervals so therefore you consider all the sums in between which are obviously infinitely many number of terms and last term is going to be f of x of n minus 1 when there are n number of intervals if you are dividing it into n number of intervals and if you are starting with x0 then the last point which is this one is going to be f of x n minus 1 into dx so basically when you integrate f of x dx let's write it in short short hand notation it is equal to summation n is equal to 0 to infinity or rather n minus 1 f of x uh let's write i so there is no confusion x i into dx so there are these infinitely many terms which are added together when you consider the integration and now it is clear why it is area under the curve this part this is this rectangle the first term gives you this area the second gives you this area this will give you area of this rectangle and in this way there are of course errors you are leaving out this area you are not calculating considering it in the sum this area is also left similarly if you consider the third interval this area will be left out of of the sum but there are these additional areas now and in this way there are these errors but in this way when you consider that dx is tending to zero you get the area of the curve you perhaps already were aware of this thing but i just considered it as revision i thought i think it is i thought it is better to revise these things before we dive into that divergence and uh, flux things okay so any questions so far any doubts in this so now let's move on and let's see what flux is okay let's define what is flux so flux is defined first let's define it for a open surface okay so what this diagram is trying to show here is some uh, surface this is a surface okay and it is or there is some vector field 
V, which is present in this region. So what we are considering here is a surface in some vector field V. And now we are trying to define flux. And flux is defined like this. Let me use the, let me write, uh, let me write phi for that. Don't get confused with this phi with scalar field. This phi here means it is flux. So I'm also using the same notation because that is generally used to define this flux. And this phi now, this flux is defined in this fashion. What you do is just like you, you did it here, you divide the subinterval into equal number of parts. You divide the surface now into equal number of or equal uh, n number of uh, smaller area segments. Each of this small shows area segment, which has area which is infinitesimally small. So ds is the area of area element. Let me call it as area element. Okay, and this ds, you, you consider that it is very small, sorry, it is, it is very small and it is tending to zero, right? And flux, it is denoted like this now. It is integration v, where v is the vector field for which we are calculating the flux, v dot ds, right? I'll come to this point now. So this is basically a dot product. This v is a, is a vector field. It's a vector at the given point and ds is the vector which is representing that small uh, area element and it is represented as a vector how and why we will come to that point and and what you do is basically this when you calculate this integration it is sim very similar to what we have done or the way riemann integrals are uh, discussed it is it, it is very similar this flux is very similar to that and what it means is this suppose i consider this small region okay so this is the zoom part of that and this is the area element. What is what is uh, area of this small segment? It is dx, ds. So, and it is tending to zero. Both of you are correct. So this area element, uh, so we are dividing this larger surface into smaller area elements, which are infinitely many because each of them has area which is tending to zero. And this red arrow here, let, let, let me erase it. And this red arrow here is the vector field. So it, this vector is, this, this red arrow indicates the vector at that given point where we are considering that surface area or area element. Okay. And now since it is infinitesimally small for, for, uh, for uh, purpose of integration, we can say that throughout this area, the vector is constant. So this V is constant throughout this area element because the area element is very small. It is tending to zero and uh, it is so small that you are not changing space too much and therefore vector field is constant throughout that small area segment. And what you calculate then is this. Then you, you, you calculate this dot product. You calculate V which is the vector at the given point or at the given area dot product with the area element ds where ds this vector is defined as it is equal to magnitude of that area which is ds into unit vector which is normal to the surface so this blue arrow here is indicating the unit vector which is normal to that surface and in this way you define the small area element as a vector which is product of magnitude of the uh, area element which is ds into unit vector which is normal to the surface, right? And now it should be clear that what is this flux when you calculate this quantity V dot ds, what you basically do is you consider all these infinitely many area elements at every of this area element you call calculate this quantity Vi or V1 for now let me write it as V1 which is vector at the first area element let's say this into ds1 dot where ds1 is given by this quantity it is product of magnitude of that small area element into vector which is normal to the surface at that point plus v2 dot product with ds2 and you go on adding all n number of such 
you go on calculating all n number of these dot products and you get the flux this is how you define the flux so sometimes this flux is written as v dot unit vector n into ds or integration ds now you should keep in mind that though i am considering only one integration symbol here this there should be actually it is a double integral because we are talking about surface now there should be two variables over which we are integrating it could be dx dy it could be r d theta so dr d theta but there are two independent variables because we are talking about surface it is a two dimensional system and when you when it comes to calculating it it happens to be a double integration for uh, for simplicity of the notation i'll stick to this one dimensional or I, i'll stick to this one integration sign whereas this ds is uh, it, it is it represents the surface and therefore it is given that it is a double integration right now let me ask you this these ds1 ds2 ds3 ds4 up to dsn are they same vectors are they same are all these infinitely many vectors same yes or no no are their magnitudes same yes so all these area elements have the same magnitude that and its magnitude is ds but all of them will have different directions at that given point whatever is normal to the surface is going to be the direction of that area element and that is how you represent it as a vector area element so is it okay is everyone fine with this any doubts so far so this is what uh, before that before we move on if this red arrows were velocity suppose we are talking about pipe okay and and if we consider that there is some fluid flowing through it not necessarily streamline flow and if you consider any surface there for this fluid or for this pipe and if you calculate the flux which we are denoting by this phi which is equal to v dot ds now where v is velocity of the fluid at any given point for this surface then this flux gives us this quantity it, it gives us volume that is crossing that particular surface area per unit time and if now if 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 this is the direction in which it is flowing suppose let's draw suppose this is x axis this is oh no it cannot be x axis if this is x axis this is y axis and this is z axis and if you consider fl uh, flow which is along y axis and if you consider area or surface which is in this yz plane then actually no volume is being crossed by the fluid through this surface so the fluid is not at all crossing that surface and therefore this flux should be equal to zero for that case and right now we considered the dot product it should be clear why it is zero because if we consider the surface which is Uh, in y z plane then all the area elements will have a direction which is along plus x axis so your velocity is along y axis it is along j axis each of the surface area has direction which is along positive i or negative i for that matter but no matter what since they are always perpendicular the dot product will always gives us give us a zero and that's why in this way you can interpret the flux if the vector field is actually representing velocity of some fluid then flux gives the volume per unit time crossing that particular surface okay any questions any questions so far you got get it all right so let's now move on to the next topic which is flux through a closed surface now th for this particular uh, discussion we are considering this simple uh, rectangular cu cuboid surface but it is true in general okay so how do we define flux through this closed surface as far as notations are concerned it is written like this it is with the circle sign it shows that you are integrating through a closed surface and it is v dot ds basically it is the same the only difference is in the first case the surface was open it wasn't closed meaning that there was no volume enclosed by that surface in 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 case of closed surface the surface closes on to itself and therefore it encloses some volume inside it 
right and for our discussion i am considering this simple rectangular cuboid now it is very important that you see the diagram as it is intended because uh, that uh, illusion visual illusion it can be seen it can be seen or it can be perceived in different way when i what my intention is to show this particular cuboid this surface is the front surface of this cuboid this so i'll call this as s f this surface i am calling it as s r let's use small uh, alphabets so since it is when you look at that box it is on right side so i am calling it as s r this is s f so it is side left surface l not f this is back surface which is at the back and then this is the top surface st and this is the bottom of the box or sb so make sure that you look at when you look at this box you perceive it the way it is intended okay let me let me write the word okay let me write as top and let me write as bottom okay so there are six surfaces and these six rectangles now are making the closed surface which is enclosing the volume inside that box in inside that rectangular cuboid to be more precise so and then now we can define this uh, flux through closed surface which is which is like this uh, one more thing just keep in mind whenever you see ds that means it is double integral you are integrating you have to integrate over two different independent variables as far as it is a surface integral and then what you do is you you then divide this closed surface into infinitely many and infinitesimally small area elements each of the area element is represented as a vector so if i consider this area element it is vector it is represented as a vector where this ds1 let me call that is equal to magnitude is ds which is equal for all the area elements and its direction is normal to the surface at that particular point so in this case uh, for this particular sr surface side uh, right surface all of them is going to point it along this direction so if i call this as x axis i call this as y axis and this is z axis then surface area or area element or this this ds1 is is along positive y axis right so this i can write it as ds into j in fact all all these surfaces for sr surface or the area all the area element for this sr surface are going to have the same vector it is ds1 or ds into j right similarly if you consider this surface now all these area elements now are going to direct towards negative y direction so all of them will have direction which is minus j all the all the directions for area elements for this front surface is now what it is s plus i right all the area elements for this back side surface is minus i and what is now can you tell me what is area element for this top surface yes so area element there is equal to each vector which represents the area element is equal to magnitude ds into plus k and and for bottom it is ds into minus k and so what you do is you divide this surface which is enclosing some volume into infinitely many area elements which are all infinitesimally small and equal and then you consider sum over all of them so i is equal to 1 to n vi vector at that particular point and it is not necessarily remember this area element is along plus j but the vector there could have any direction it will depend on what kind of vector field you are assuming so you have to we don't know that yet all we can talk about here is the area element which has this direction which is plus j and its magnitude is ds1 vector can be anything so you consider vector at that point take the dot product with the area element there and in this way you go on adding all the dot products 
all of them are scalars and you get the flux so flux basically is a scalar quantity right there is small small thing that you have to keep in mind when it comes to flux through closed surfaces what is it when it to consider this uh, flux through open surface now is there a unique way to represent this unit vector right it is not unique and why it is not unique because you could have considered the direction which is downwards isn't it that i can either consider direction which is along this side normals along uh, normals which are pointing towards upward or i can uh, if i consider the other side i can talk about the unit vectors which are downwards isn't it so there are two ways they are same in magnitude that is true but their direction is opposite and generally when you say you calculate flux you can choose any of this direction is this point clear that when we consider open surface there could actually be two directions to that open surface and what will happen when you can consider fluxes if you consider a uh, direction along one side then this flux if is positive then for the other side that flux will be negative but that ambiguity is not there when it comes to uh flux calculating flux through closed surface there is uniquely each area element now is uniquely represented how it is done the direction is cho chosen so that it always points away from the enclosed volume so as far as i consider this surface right side surface i have to consider direction which is always pointing towards plus j why because that is the direction which is pointing away from the volume similarly for this top now i can either consider normal which are along positive z axis or i can consider direction which is along negative axis but i always choose the direction by definition i choose the direction or by convention i choose the direction which is always pointing away from the volume and therefore in this case it is going to be this upward direction so if this is clear then uh, this is very important first i'll read this positive instead of this word in the uh, in the parenthesis and i'll read source instead of this word which is in the parenthesis so flux through a closed surface is positive if the volume enclosed or the volume encloses a source of the vector field so if you consider that this box is now uh, is um, is enclosing some plus q charge and if i am talking about Uh, a vector field which is electric electrostatic vector field then if it is positive charge you can imagine that all these surfaces now at every of these surfaces the vector field which is the electrostatic field and the normal to the surface is going to make a direction which is either which is in between 0 and 90 degrees so no matter which area element i consider for this particular situation the angle between the vector field or the electrostatic electric field and normal to that area element is always in between 0 and 90 degrees it is never greater than that even if this this charge is somewhere here which is slightly above uh, the bottom surface then for these area elements it may happen that electric field is almost along the sur surface but even in that case the angle is 90 degrees so my what i'm trying to tell you is if a surface encloses a positive or if in, it encloses a source then uh, then this vector field always makes an angle which is in between 0 to 90 degrees and therefore the dot product will always be positive or zero and when you consider the sum the flux will always be positive right on the other hand if i consider the other situation where this is minus q then i have to read it with the words in the parenthesis so what it would mean is the flux through a closed surface is negative if the volume encloses a sink so if this was negative charge what will happen is at every point at every area area element the direction of area element and the vector is going to make an angle which is in between uh, which is between 90 to 180 degree and therefore dot product is always zero or negative and when you consider sum of all of sum of all these uh, dot products it's going to be negative and 
it is the third case if you consider a charge which is outside that volume now what is going to happen is at some of the points some at some of the area elements they are going to add or they are going to co contribute positively some of the other areas other area elements they are going to contribute negatively and the sum is always such that the flux is equal to zero okay in fact that is the message which is there on the next slide so flux through enclosed surface is zero if the volume does not encloses any source or sink right is the concept clear how do we define it is clear divergence of a vector field is defined or it is calculated by this dot product of del with the vector field and therefore it is do phi or rather do v x let me let's write it for sake of completion so this is partial differentiation with respect to x partial differentiation with respect to y plus partial differentiation with respect to z dot product with v x i plus v y j plus v z k and therefore del dot v is equal to do v x by do x plus do v y by do y plus do v z by do z so this is how mathematically you calculate divergence of a vector field now we want to discuss the physical significance of that let's first uh, make sense of this diagram what you have here is infinitesimally small volume it is not a finite volume and these are the axes this is x axis this is y axis and this is z axis this length of the box is dx which is infinitesimally small this is sorry this cannot be dx this is dy this length is dx and this length is dz and all these three uh, edges of this box or this uh, rectangular cuboid they tend to zero so dx is tending to zero dy is tending to zero and dz is tending to zero and volume of this box now is dx let me write d to for that we are using to to denote volume so that v is left for vector field okay so d to is dx into dy into dz which also is tending to zero since dx dy dz are infinitesimally small d to turns out to be infinitesimally small volume again perceive the diagram as it is intended so this is the front surface of the box this is the right surface this is the left surface this is top and this one is bottom okay now this is not the origin though the the axes are drawn like that that is not origin but that point basically describes the center of the uh, box so it may be origin or it may not be but this is the center of the box and at that point vector field assumes value v so at this point at the center of the box the vector field assumes value v which means its x component is vx its y component is vy and z component is vz now what we want to find out is we want to find out the total flux through the box so this is what we want to calculate we want to find out the total flux let me use we have we are using this notation phi for flux so phi therefore is to be calculated for this box which can be done by adding these six flux i can consider flux through this right side surface added to flux through left side surface plus added to flux through the front surface plus added to the flux through back surface plus flux through uh, top surface and flux through bottom surface so in this way to find the find the flux out of this infinitesimally small volume i can consider each of these fluxes through open surfaces and find out the sum that that should give me the net flux through the infinitesimal small volume but though these are now open surfaces since we are calculating flux through this closed volume you have to keep in mind that when we define 
area elements ds they are always pointed away from the volume so they are for this surface it is always pointed in this direction for the top surface it is in upward direction and for front surface it is along plus x axis for back surface it is along minus x axis and so on and so forth so in this way you have to keep the direction of uh, the area elements in mind and now let's find out this net flux through this infinitesimally small volume let's do it let me start with this surface here which is on the uh, right side so let's start let's start with phi r flux through right side i can write it as v at that surface vector at surface which is side surface dotted with the small area element for that small uh, infinitesimally small surface which is the right side of the which is the right surface of that cube we, which we are assuming so let's first find out what is dsr what is this vector equal to can you now tell me so it is a vector that means it has magnitude its magnitude is same as area of this surface which is this length which is dx into this length which is dz isn't it am i correct yes it is dx into dz so its magnitude is dx into dz and what is the direction it is j now it is along because i have to consider the direction which is pointing away from the enclosed volume and therefore that direction is j and therefore dsr is equal to dx into dz into vector j right now let's consider this vector vs what i will do is instead of considering any uh, all the components of this vector we will consider only the component which is going to contribute to this phi r in terms of non zero value so which of which of uh, which is the component which contributes no, uh, con contributes to this phi r now there are three components right this v has three components it is x component at the surface it has y component at the surface and it has z component at the surface and now i am asking which of these three components will contribute to the flux through this side surface that we are uh, considering right now yes it will be the j or y component or which is multiplied by j why because we are taking dot product here vs with dot product with this uh, area element dsr the area element is a vector which is along j component so if when you consider these two components x components and z components of the vector when you take dot product of these components with dsr vector what is going to happen is they are going to give you a zero scalar zero because they are perpendicular to each other this i is perpendicular to j and k is perpendicular to j and therefore this phi r can be obtained when you consider only the y component of the vector and in fact this now is going to be equal to v s y which means it is v it is y component of the vector at this surface into dx into dz because j dot j is equal to 1 this is what we should get this is the flux and it is a scalar quantity now is this clear to everyone okay i guess there are no questions now what we have to find is we have to find this vector or y component of the vector at this surface what we know is at the center of the cube or at the center of that box y component is equal to vy so at this point y component is vy but we want to find out the component at this surface where we have changed the space along y axis by a length of dy by 2 am i right because to reach this surface we are considering component let me erase this so that i can again show so what we are doing is we are considering this surface we want to find out vector or y component of the vector at this surface at this point we know that the y component is vy and we want vy at the surface to reach this point we have to move along positive y axis by a length of dy by 2 because this length is equal to dy so i have to move along length of dy by 2 so 
so here vy is the y component we want to find out vy at this point and to reach that point we have to cover a distance which is dy by 2 and and therefore vsy is going to be equal to dvy by do y sorry not d do vy by do y into dy by 2 because this gives me rate with rate of change of y component along y axis and this is the length by which i am moving and therefore vsy is given by this quantity so phi r therefore is equal to do vy or uh, it is it is the total difference i have to add vy to it okay so what is phi r then phi r is equal to vy Plus do v y by do y into d y by two into d x into d z. Now let's find out this flux through the left surface. This is the dot product v at the left surface dot product with the area element of that surface, which let me write it as d s l. Right? What is d s l now? Yes, it is a vector whose magnitude is area of that surface, which is d x into d z, and now it, its direction should be such that it is pointing away from the volume, and that is therefore in negative y axis along uh, negative y axis, and therefore it is minus j. Now, when I consider this vector v l vector at that surface, this surface v l. then i have three components first one which is x component then y component and z component of the vector at the surface at the left surface now which of the which of these three components are going to contribute to this flux it is only the y component because they this i and k are perpendicular to j when you consider the dot product it will give you a zero and therefore this is the only component that will contribute to the flux and if you now calculate the dot product this is plus j this is minus j what you get is it is now equal to minus vl into dx into dz now we have to calculate this component vly at the surface again we have to use the same concept we know that at the center of the box y component is equal to vy but since we are now shifting by a distance of dy by 2 along negative axis negative y axis we have to subtract the term so the change that occurs is dv y do vy by do y into y is changed by dy by 2 since we are decreasing value of y when we reach the left surface we have to consider the negative sign and therefore vl therefore phi l turns out to be equal to what is it now it is minus vy plus do vy by do y into dx into dz is it okay is this fine so where we started we wanted to find out the net flux out of that infinitesimally small volume which is equal to phi r plus phi l plus phi front plus phi back plus phi top plus phi bottom okay now can you guess why i have written them Written these terms in pairs, these fluxes in pairs. So, if you consider these two, these two flux phi r and phi l, so surfaces which are right and left surfaces, they are perpendicular to y axis. And then, for therefore, when you consider the dot product to calculate the flux, it is only y component of the vector which will contribute non-zero. Similarly, if you consider this phi f and phi b, phi front and phi back. then this surfaces now are perpendicular to x axis and therefore only x component of the vector will make the contribution and similarly for phi top and phi bottom it is only the 
z component of the vector which will contribute now here when in on the previous slide we have uh, considered phi r and we have considered phi l and if you add them now phi r plus phi l what will happen is let's go to these two terms so here what you have is you have negative minus minus vy into dx dz here you have positive dy into dx dz so th when you add them these components will cancel out and these these the second term will only stay there and therefore when you add phi r plus phi l vy itself will cancel out and you will be left with this do vy by do z uh, do y into dy into dx into dz you can try you can convince yourself for that similarly now if i consider phi f plus phi b what do you think i'll get take a hint from what we have obtained here see phi r and phi l are the fluxes for the surface which is perpendicular to y axis similarly these phi f and phi b are the fluxes for the surface which are perpendicular to x axis and phi top and phi bottom are the fluxes for the surfaces which are perpendicular to z axis and for phi r plus phi l this is what we have what will be phi f plus phi b yes someone please tell me what will be phi top plus phi bottom right this is what you will get so this is flux through the surfaces through the two surfaces which are perpendicular to y axis these are the fluxes through the two surfaces which are perpendicular to x axis and these are the fluxes through the surfaces which are perpendicular to z axis right and therefore net flux out of this infinitesimally small volume is equal to let me write it here so i'll write it in this box d uh, phi total flux through this infinitesimally small box therefore is do vx by do x plus do vy by do y plus do vz by do z and i can take this dx into dy into dz common and remember dx into dy into dz is the infinitesimally small volume of that box and therefore flux instead of phi i'll write flux now so flux per unit volume through this infinitesimally small box at the given point x y z which is which is centered at x y z is obtained by this do v x by do x plus do v y by do y plus do v z by do z which is nothing but divergence of the vector field at that point so if you consider infinitesimally small volume centered at a given point and if you calculate divergence of vector field at that point what it gives us is the flux per unit volume moving out from that infinitesimally small volume for that given vector field is this clear this is what it means divergence physical significance of divergence is this divergence of a vector field gives us the outward flux per unit volume about the given point about which we are calculating the flux okay so this is very important let's consider the divergence theorem now okay let's move on to the divergence theorem what we have is a box again see it the way it is intended this is the front surface that is the back one and so on and so forth so these dashed line are the edges which are which will not be visible just keep in mind that this box is fine box has finite volume it is not infinitesimally small and then what you try to calculate is this thing you try to calculate integration over this closed volume of divergence of this vector so this is what you are calculating so this is now integration over the closed volume and what is the closed volume it is in this volume is the volume which is enclosed by the box so tau is volume of that box 
right now del dot v is a vector quantity uh, sorry it is a scalar quantity and therefore what you are doing is you are integrating this over this closed volume and we saw that what it means to integrate what we basically do when you calculate this integration is is this what you do is you divide this whole volume into smaller volumes which are each infinitesimally small so i have here uh, shown two boxes this box which is infinitesimally small this box which is infinitesimally small and what you do is you divide this large volume into infinitesimally smaller volumes which are infinitely many and then consider this divergence for each of these boxes and then add them together throughout the volume and that way you get this integration right so this is a volume integration remember it and since it is volume integration though i am using only one integral symbol here this actually is a triple integral this d to if i am i'm i'm using a cartesian coordinate system this d to is dx into dy into dz so there are three independent uh, variables involved and therefore when you calculate this in triple integral there there should be actually three integrals over x over y over z if i consider the cartesian coordinate system for some other coordinate system it will depend it may be over r theta and phi if you are considering spherical polar coordinate system or in general any curvilinear coordinate system it is a triple integral because d to is a volume integral a volume element so this is what we are calculating we are calculating this volume integral for this finite surface and what we do basically is we divide this finite volume into infinitesimally smaller volumes like this i have though i am considering box here uh, the same discussion is true for any volume of any shape okay and then what you do is you go on adding all these fluxes or all these divergences so this is going to be equal to i is equal to 1 to n remember n is tending to infinity of del i or del dot v at this point i into d to right where d to is volume of that volume element now we are here we are talking about volume element is this clear what this uh, notation says it says that you are considering the divergence of the vector at the point where you are considering the infinitesimally small volume and in this way you go on adding all of them okay let's consider addition of fluxes or addition of this del dot v for say this is m mth volume element plus del dot v of this nth element so this is m uh, this is nth element in this summation this is nth element in this summation and we are considering only these two additions now what is oh, it is all multiplied by d to remember this this is multiplied by d to i cannot forget that right so therefore what is this equal to now what does divergence tell us divergence we just saw that is flux outside the small infinitesimal small volume per unit volume so when you multiply it by the volume of that uh, volume element what you get is you get the flux through nth volume plus this term divergence of the vector at the nth box gives us flux per unit volume through that infinitesimally small volume then you in, you multiply it by the volume of the element and therefore that term will give you flux this has to be m right and therefore what is this equal to it will give you now the flux through the larger box larger box by larger box i mean this box okay which is made up of two uh, two boxes now what happens to the flux through this wall this this surface which is shared by these two volumes is for mth blocks the flux will be or the vector suppose is in this direction the area element is in that direction for nth box the area element is in the opposite direction and therefore flux through that common surface contributes nothing when you consider this summation it is equal and opposite since the surface is shared by 
these two volumes and what we get is the flux through larger volume is this clear actually this is important this is very rather this is the whole point that this surface which is shared by these two volume elements will give the fluxes so that one if it is positive the other one is equal and it is negative and when you consider summation of the fluxes what will happen is they will cancel out and therefore what you will get is you will get flux through this larger volume in this way when you go on the when you add the third volume now what will happen is the surfaces which are shared by these three volumes there will be this surface will be shared by one and two this top surface will be shared by this volume and this volume and flux through those surface will cancel out and when you consider summation of these three what will happen is you will get flux through this larger volumes right and in this fashion when you go on adding the fluxes or all these uh, terms together what will happen is what will happen is you will get flux through the larger volume so any surface which you consider inside the box is going to be shared by exactly two infinitesimally small volumes and when you add them when you add the fluxes through them or when you make the addition of these scalar terms these common surfaces will give you equal and opposite fluxes and therefore when you consider this whole term they will contribute nothing they will give you zero and only those fluxes will contribute which are not shared by the infinitesimally small volume elements which is this larger surface which is enclosing the finite volume is this idea making any sense is it, is it clear therefore what this actually is equal to is basically this quantity it is now surface integration it is flux through this larger volume which is v dot ds is this fine so what we have obtained basically is this we started from this point and in the end this is what we have obtained so this is the divergence divergence theorems it gives us a way to convert volume integral to surface integral if if there are no doubts let's quickly summarize so what we have discussed is this we defined flux which is basically the integration v dot ds now we defined this flux for uh, closed volume as well as for open open volume then we considered divergence of a vector field and what is significance of that significance of divergence of vector field is that it gives us flux per unit volume through closed uh through closed surface okay then we considered the gauss's divergence theorem uh, it is called as gauss's divergence theorem so these are the topics that we uh, discussed in this lecture